Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about Kevin Hogan, uh, the Cleveland Browns' new starting quarterback. Uh, it was recently announced that uh, due to lots of different things, you know, Deshaun Kaiser uh, is not going to be the starting quarterback for the Browns anymore. Uh, and I got a lot of requests. In fact, one guy in particular, Tyler uh, Morales, who was just kind of sending me messages back and forth in terms of different platforms. Do a Kevin Hogan video. Do a Kevin Hogan video. So I might as well do one. Uh, and uh, just to structure the video, I just wanted to get into, okay, why are we making this switch? Just to make it clear why the switch is being made what Kevin Hogan looked like from an analytical perspective in terms of his high school production, his college production, and then the last part I'll end with is his preseason production and preseason data, uh, which I don't normally talk about preseason data, but I felt like there was a lot of things just screaming at the Browns uh, when it comes to their preseason data that favored Hogan uh, that I wanted to bring into this. But uh, So starting with uh, completion percentage data so there's two main factors why the Browns are making this decision you know the one factor of course is they're not winning a lot of football games but this is how Deshaun Kaiser is performing this year you know when it comes to his uh, completion percentage on first down second down third down and fourth down the only area where he's actually in the 12 or more win range or even eight or more win range uh, are third down and fourth down um, significantly below average when it comes to first down and second down which is where the majority of downs usually happen by the way is is first and second down but what's more so bad about this is the conversion rate so this is the conversion rate for Deshaun Kaiser when it comes to converting with the pass uh, in terms of first down second down and third down and fourth down and all significantly below average most quarterbacks who perform like this uh, don't win seven wins or less, you know, uh, and you haven't won any games yet. So, you know, the decision was made ultimately because of this. Now, you know, there's multiple reasons why. I mean, people are going to debate why Deshaun Kaiser didn't work out. Some people are going to say he wasn't prepared, which I actually side with. I don't think he was ready. I think he was pushed into the situation uh, because he was a rookie and because they felt like, hey, let's just wing it. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I don't think he was, you know, he's a very young quarterback and he wasn't ready um, on top of other sort of factors. Or you have other people who just say he's just not very good. Uh, he was never going to be good. And this is just proof of it. Uh, and then, you know, there's lots of different theories out there. But now I want to just focus on Kevin Hogan. So when we get to Kevin Hogan, uh, just looking at his high school production and his uh, college production. Um, now, I know a lot of you guys are probably new to this information so all terms and definitions will be in the description so if there's any terms that you've probably haven't heard before you're new to the channel uh, you you can find those terms in in, uh, in terms of what they mean in the uh, description so with Kevin Hogan's high school production uh, he had a 12.8 out of a hundred uh, compared to every single high school quarterback since the 2004 recruiting class and in that time span Specifically from the 2007 NFL draft class to the current NFL draft class There's never been a long-term starting quarterback a quarterback that's had 64 starts or more in their career To have less than a 69 in terms of their high school production score uh, And the majority of multiple Pro Bowl quarterbacks guys like Cam Newton uh, Russell Wilson Andrew Luck, you know guys like that all those guys in that time span had at least an 84 or higher when it comes to their high school production. So Kevin Hogan, from a high school production standpoint, doesn't hit any of the major thresholds he needs to hit in terms of being a long-term starter or in terms of being a multiple Pro Bowl quarterback. So that's the one area of uh, concern. The biggest red flag on Kevin Hogan's resume is his high school production. Where the positives exist is, is, is in his FBS production where he had a 87.81 out of 100, which pretty much hits the Pro Bowl threshold uh, for quarterbacks. Now the FBS stat score goes all the way back to the 1958 NFL draft class. That's why sometimes I side with it over high school production. I mean, I don't know how I feel about high school. I mean, high school production score has a ton of quarterbacks in it. It's a giant sample size. It's statistically significant. 
I've posted all the results on my blog at draftcorpernetworkpress.com. If you just type in high school quarterbacks there, all the info, all the spreadsheets there at least, it has all the data in there. But I still kind of side with EFS production sometimes just because, you know, I don't cover every single quarterback. Like I don't have all the high school production data going all the way back to 1958. I'm, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that. Uh, but... Uh, you know, th that is a big positive for Kevin Hogan is that he did perform really well in college. Um, you know, 87.81 is nothing to sneeze at. That's a pretty good FBS production score. So he does have that going for him. And when I was looking at comps for him, and again, I really tried to find a guy kind of like Kevin Hogan from a high school and, and from a college production standpoint. Uh, the one guy that came up was Brian Hoyer. And I know you guys are going to know Brian Hoyer, but Brian Hoyer was a guy that had a high school production score of a 19.59 out of 100 and a college production score of 61.59 out of 100. And as you can clearly see, Hogan is better than, than Brian Hoyer was, at least in college, you know, he was better. So I don't know if this gives you hope. I don't know what this gives you, but I would say that this does give you some sense that maybe Hogan could be a better version of Brian Hoyer as far as ultimate upside. The, the high school production does indicate that long-term starter is not there. And again, I'm talking about 64 starts or more in his career. That has nothing to do with whether or not he's better than Kaiser or any other quarterbacks on the Browns for that matter. But it does kind of speak to, again, I'm looking at long-term production. I'm looking at what this guy could be long term that's the biggest part about analytics is i'm not looking at if a guy could come in and be good one year you know pull a Derek anderson i'm looking at can a guy become a consistent pro bowl high quality nfl quarterback most of the data doesn't favor that however brian hoyer's had his moments and i think kevin hogan can have his moments so from that kind of perspective i think this is the best you can kind of expect for hogan based on all the available data that i've been able to comb through is maybe a Brian Hoyer, but better type of uh, sort of result. Uh, which brings us to the preseason production. So I don't normally kick out the preseason data. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge believer in preseason data. However, preseason data does indicate certain things. The best way to explain preseason data is you don't want to be terrible in preseason being great in preseason is kind of, it doesn't really matter if you're great in preseason, but you don't necessarily want to be terrible in preseason uh, because the data kind of backs it up when it comes to average. And this, for example, is a 50 or higher QBR percentile of quarterbacks. They typically perform better in preseason versus quarterbacks that have 50 or less QBR. Um, so preseason is somewhat of a gauge of who's a good quarterback and who's not a good quarterback. Uh, for the most part, there's there's tons of variables that influence this and, and can affect this. But uh, in the general whole, uh, you know, quarterbacks that do well in preseason have a better chance statistically of having a good QBR. You know, um, so and, and when you look at Kevin Hogan, and I think the big ones I think I want you guys to look at specifically is uh, completion percentage, which is PCT, average, uh, well not average, but rating or rate, which is quarterback rating. Uh, touchdown interception ratio to a certain extent and all all is a encompassing data point that includes all of the statistics so all of the data from completion percentage average yards per attempt uh, quarterback rating touchdown interception ratio uh, percentage of 20 plus yard plays percentage of 40 plus yard passing plays sack percentage td percentage interception percentage and then all just includes all that and what was clear from preseason was that Kevin Hogan was the best quarterback out of the Browns. Um, every single Browns quarterback. And Kaiser was actually the third best quarterback. Um, and the areas where Kaiser struggled in preseason was completion percentage and quarterback rating. What are the areas that Kaiser's struggling the most with right now? Completion percentage and quarterback rating. And his sack percentage or his sack rate in preseason was also not that great as well uh, so uh, from that kind of perspective I'm not saying that the Browns should have gone with Kevin Hogan all along I mean I'm not trying to be hindsight or whatever with it but I do think that there's a lot of positive indicators that at the very least Kevin Hogan could end up being an above average QBR player now above average QBR 
is above average QBR. I mean, that doesn't mean that you're going to be amazing. It doesn't mean that you're like Kevin Hogan's going to step in there and uh, become uh, Tom Brady or anything like that. But it does indicate that he could be a better performer than the, the other quarterbacks on the roster. And he could elevate the quarterback play to a level that's average, which could ultimately end up winning football games, you know? So from that kind of perspective, that's, that's kind of how I feel about Kevin Hogan at this point. I think, you know, what do you have to lose? Uh, you know, you, the, the Kaiser's not working. It, it's just not working. And we can make all the excuses in the world and, and, and talk about this to death about why Kaiser isn't working and, and give him another chance next year. And again, I'm not even debating that kind of stuff. I mean, we can have that debate after the season. But as of right now, Kaiser is not working when it comes to winning football games. The completion percentage is not where it needs to be. And the ability to convert on, on, on to convert first downs in many different scenarios is not there. So why not go with Kevin Hogan? He obviously performed pretty well in preseason. Uh, he obviously doesn't have the high school production indicative of someone that that based on the data that he would have to be an outlier you know he would have to be an outlier to become a long-term starting quarterback because there's never been a starting quarterback since 2007 to have this high school production score to go on to be a 64 starter more player but he did have a good college production season you know 87.81 out of 100 and, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying there's, there's a lot of positives here. So there's a lot of things pointing towards good things. And, of course, in limited time, uh, Kevin Hogan also did, made some big plays here and there uh, in terms of them. And on top of that, there might be some people going, well, does Kevin Hogan give you the deep ball and stuff like that? And, honestly, in preseason, he, Kevin Hogan had a better 20-plus yard play percentage and 40-plus yard uh, what well, he, he didn't have a better 40 plus yard play percentage but very on par uh, with uh, Kaiser so Hogan was better at making deep plays in terms of 20 plus yard plays and, and uh, 40 plus yard plays pretty much on par if not better than Kaiser when it came to 20 plus yard percentage uh, so from that kind of perspective uh, you know I, again I think Kaiser I, I, I as far as long term goes the jury's still out on Hogan. I don't feel very good about him in terms of long-term success on the Browns. But in terms of right now, in terms of getting a quarterback to come in, perform better than Kaiser, and win you some football games now, because, that's again, that's what you, you, you need to win football games. I think Co Hogan, so far, has proven to be a guy that can do that for you, at least in preseason. There's a lot of positive indicators pointing to the fact that he probably will end up being a better quarterback than Kaiser. What does that mean long, you know, overall? I don't know. But at the very least, I think there's enough things on paper to say that Hogan could end up being a better quarterback than Kaiser. But as far as long-term stuff, I can't really say because there just hasn't been a guy like this before uh, in terms of his high school production data. Um, so overall, that's my general feelings about Hogan. I, I, I think he'll be better than Kaiser. Whether he should have been the guy all along, and again, is a wholly different discussion. There's plenty of data to, that you could throw in people's faces about this. But uh, I just wanted to throw this video out there to give you guys some, I wouldn't say reassurance, but just some hope, you know, that uh, things could get better. Because, you know, I don't like to see any NFL team struggle, and uh, hopefully Hogan can come in and, uh, and perform well. Uh, so, of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.